I have to somehow explain to Johan that we're never going to New York. <laughs> we have a lot to do. Come on. So the idea is you are giving up your apartment, you're getting rid of all your stuff forever. You're fantasizing about this life you're gonna have in DR. How are you going to afford it? it? I'm gonna manifest it. Awesome! On the Sunday morning of the new Other Way premiere, I woke up excited to watch it on Discovery Plus, but it was nowhere to be found. I thought a benefit of Discovery Plus was to get to see the premieres early, but I guess not. It wasn't actually available until the next day. Super annoying. When I did finally get to watch the premiere, I was happy to see some new faces. We have a fresh batch of mostly new couples. Only one of them is familiar, and no, it's not Steven with a V. It's Danielle from Love in Paradise. Danielle was on season two of Love in Paradise with her fiancé, Johan, and their story seemed a bit strange. 42-year-old Danielle met Johan when she was vacationing in the Dominican Republic. Johan is 32 years old, and he was a personal trainer at the hotel that I was staying at. They spent a few days together, and then Danielle returned to New York, but she returned six weeks later to visit him, and he proposed. This fast-paced engagement is an all-too-common story we see on 90 Day Fiancé. The big question was, who was scamming who in this situation? Their Love in Paradise season followed their story of what happened after their fast engagement, including Danielle telling her close friends about her plans to marry Johan. So I met a guy in the Dominican Republic. His name is Johan. I think we're getting married next week. <gasps> no, wait, no, 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 no. next week. <laughs> no, no. Her friends' reactions were hilarious, especially when Danielle says the real reason for their rush. He really wants a child. I really want a child. I mean, I'm definitely trying to have a baby. Wait. No. No! <laughs> no! Danielle is 42, and she has suddenly decided that she needs to have a baby immediately. Apparently, she also wanted a puppy recently, so her friends don't take her seriously. Even though she seems to be completely delusional with this whole situation, she is aware that Johan could be using her. Right after I came home from my first trip, when I first met him, he went and got a tattoo. He got a dollar sign on his arm. So he proposed to her, then gets a dollar sign tattoo. Not a red flag at all. But don't worry, because he covered it up when she said she didn't like it. What a great guy. These two don't seem to have a lot in common, including their religious beliefs. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I practice Ifa, which is an African spiritual tradition. But Johan is an evangelical Christian, and he really doesn't understand my spiritual beliefs. Don't ask me. But Johan thinks that he can get three things from her. One of them already mentioned was having a baby with him. The other is that he thinks that Danielle has money. Johan ate um, $200 worth of peanuts. Johan doesn't even take his wallet out if I'm around. He just expects that if we buy something, I'm going to pay for it. And the last thing is that he expects her to take him to New York after they get married. Todo dominicano quiere ir a los Estados Unidos. So that's his full checklist of expectations. Have a baby, money, and going to the U.S. But throughout the Love in Paradise episodes, we learn that Danielle could not provide two out of those three things. She finds out that she has a low chance of having a baby naturally, and her teacher salary can't afford expensive fertility treatments. But instead of trying to accept that, she tries to manifest what she wants. I'm turning to the gods and goddesses for help. Offering fruit and flowers to the river is the same thing as throwing a penny into a wishing well. You're asking the universe for what you want. And I don't think Johan has a clue of what's going on. <laughs> so even with all these issues, they plant some stuff in the ground and end up going through with getting married. And now on this season of The Other Way, Danielle is moving to the Dominican Republic since it'll take a while to get Johan's visa. And everyone she tells about her relationship thinks that Johan is still using her. A thanky panky is a man who works at an, a resort and is looking for tourists. As of now, Johan is still getting one thing on his checklist, a way to get to the U.S. But when Danielle tells her friends about her move, she says it will be permanent. You're fantasizing about this life you're going to have in DR. How are you going to afford it? it? I'm going to manifest it. So she's going to bury more stuff somewhere and hope for the best? Okay. I haven't applied for the BZ yet. Does he know that? Yes, I think so. She tells her friends that she's getting rid of her apartment and is going to find a way to work there. So she's quitting her job, losing her pension, and just moving there and hoping for the best? Is that what manifesting is? Because that sounds like a terrible plan. I don't want to be in New York. Everything is three times more expensive than it is anywhere else. 
At this point, too, there's no mention of her coming back when the visa is completed. New York is very expensive, so why don't they just try to live somewhere else in the U.S. that's warm? It's not expensive like New York everywhere. She does seem like she's completely made up her mind about this plan, so it looks like Johan's last expectation on his checklist will be gone. Danielle heads to the Dominican Republic to get ready to move down there, permanently. And Johan has no idea. He is even learning English, thinking he's still headed to the U.S. Me interesa aprender inglés. Por más oportunidad en los Estados Unidos. I'm not completely on this guy's side either. I definitely think he's a scammer that wants Danielle for money and a green card. But she is also completely pulling the rug out from under him. I have to somehow explain to Johan that we're never going to New York. <laughs> we have a lot to do. ¿Cómo? She's coming over with no job and no plans to go through with the visa. She scammed the scammer. Angela wants to remind you to subscribe to this channel. If you don't, she will be released in your city. I told Johan that I would apply for the spousal visa for him to come and live in the United States, but I have since changed my mind. Now that she's arrived, she's going to tell Johan her real plan. And they are barely in the car before she starts talking about wanting an apartment that is not temporary. And then drops the news. Por solo un año. Maybe quiero por más tiempo. She says she never wants to go back to her country, and he looks completely shocked. Johan does not want to live in the Dominican Republic, and Danielle is not doing what she agreed to before they got married. Ese es uno de mis sueños, y Daniela viene y me está dañando mis sueños. So what level of delusion makes her think that he will stick around when he doesn't get anything she promised him? Sueño americano no es real. Danielle tried to manifest a baby on season two of Love in Paradise, and now she's trying to manifest a life in the Dominican Republic with no job and a husband that doesn't want to live there. Will Johan run for the hills when he realizes that Danielle is not going to take him to the U.S.? Or did Danielle's manifesting work and he will stay with her and never live his dream of going to the U.S.? I can't imagine that this is going to go well, no matter how many times Danielle tries to sage the bad energy out of it. Let me know what you think about this couple. Yo me enteré por primera vez de la religión de Daniela. Yo pensé que ella era una bruja. <laughs> we'll have to wait and see his reaction on the next episode. Anyways, thanks for watching. Bye!